we see Pikachu and Zekrom GX on the field for Fabian. The first tag team is in action. No fear from Fabian putting it down straight away. He's also got himself an Absol on the bill oh, for yep. turn one, which is really big for him because both of these players are relying on Jirachi-based engines. He's going to straight away switch into his own Jirachi and start stellar wishing for himself here. Yeah, that Absol is a very, very big tech card because of the, the prevalence of Jirachi and a skateboard. Uh, its ability adds one to the retreat cost of your opponent's active Pokemon if it's a basic Pokemon. So that means Jirachi's retreat cost is two, and then all of a sudden you can't put a skateboard on it and retreat for free. It completely breaks up this big combo that all these decks are using. Just one tech card, uh, an innocent looking Absol, completely changes the complexion of how these decks work. And both players are going to be playing Absol as well. So they're both <laughs> trying to limit each other from the amount of Jirachis they get to use as we see uh, Pedro kick off with his own Stellar Wish here. Fabian just had a pretty, you know, regular one energy attachment on his first turn, but even that is pressure. Even that's scary because it doesn't take much for you to be able to ramp up energies from then on. Pedro is going to start off with an Ultra Ball here. Similar to the Malamar deck, you love putting one or two Lightning Energies into the discard pile early on because it has great synergy with your Tapu Koko Prism Star, one of the best ways for you to get extra energies on the board early on in the game. Yeah, and looking at the deck list, I think they're actually playing the exact same 60 cards. Yeah, they do uh, test together, these two guys, and uh, I'm not surprised, to be honest. I think they may be staying in the same hotel even, <laughs> so these guys are very familiar with one another, and they've come up with a strategy together. Both of them test a lot. So I know Pedro yeah. is essentially full-time at just playing Pokemon. <laughs> that is what he does, and uh, he's had a lot of time to test. Like you say, he's not afraid to play new strategies just because the amount of time he's able to commit to play the game, and he thinks this is the strongest deck to go go far in the tournament. All right, so we do see Tapu Lele GX coming down for Pedro. That is a dangerous card to put down in this matchup because of Pikachu and Zekrom's GX attack. Tag Bolt GX, if they can get to six energy on the tag team, they can knock out that Tapu Lele GX on the bench and take a massive like four or five prize card turn sometimes. So it'll be dangerous to have that on his bench, but there is a lot of very strange things happening in this matchup because everybody knows how powerful Pikachu and Zekrom GX is. They have a lot of cards to deal with it. And one of the big ones is going to be that Tapu Koko GX that both players are using. So there's going to be some weird dance going on here of, yeah, I want to attack with Pikachu and Zekrom GX as quickly as I can, but am I supposed to put all three lightning energy in play with full blitz. It's hard to tell. Wow, we see Pedro. He had a Pikachu and Zekrom in his hand, but instead he's going to commit both choice bands and lightning energy to his Tapu Lele GX instead. He plays only uh, two copies of energy switch, a little low compared to a lot of other builds. Obviously, he's had to fit in a lot of space for Jirachis instead. He's drawn into a lot of base energy cards and not much else, so he's just going to have to pass here. Feels like a oh. much slower turn from him. It looks like Pedro is going to take quite a different strategy in this game. As you said, not even opting to bench his tag team. Maybe thinking that it's just going to be a liability because, I mean, Fabian could easily Guzma it out, hit it with full blitz, and then, I mean, what do you do from there if you're Pedro? That's just a three-prize liability. It really is a bit of a fear factor. The Tapu Koko GX is always something that's in both player, the back of both players' minds. So if ever there are full blitz with a bunch of energy cards... There's like big swings that can come back into play. So the liability of three prizes being given up is always a fear. So even when you feel ahead with this deck, there are big ways that players can come back. So Pedro's start isn't the best, especially with the amount of energies that he drew into, not giving him many options at all for turn two. Yep. But we are seeing Fabian grabbing himself a lightning energy and a, a skateboard here himself. Pedro hasn't been able to find himself an Absol. He's, so Fabian's not going to find it difficult to at least put pressure on with Zapdos, if not anything else this turn. Yeah, if he can find that Thunder Mountain Prism Star or perhaps Tapu Koko Prism Star plus an energy switch, he could pull off a full blitz this turn. But look, looks like he's going straight for Zapdos. That Thunderous Assault going to do 80 damage, knock out Jirachi. And looks like Fabian's going to take the lead here in this first game. And how will his opponent respond with just one energy in play? Uh, no Pokemon on the bench. Not a whole lot going on. 
it looks like his only drawing supporter is a Lily as well, and that's not going to go very far with the amount of cards Oof. in his current hand size. So maybe it's just a, either a stalling Guzma play or just Guzmaing anything up. But you can't really rely on this little Tapu Lele GX. It's uh, just 170 hit points, and there's already a choice Oof. band on Fabian's uh, Pikachu and Zekrom in the back. He might just be using Energy Drive. Uh, like you said, he could Guzma out the Pikachu and Zekrom. That seems very risky, yeah. though. Then it's just <laughs> energy switch, energy, and you've yeah. lost the game. Yeah. Uh, you could Guzma out the Absol, or you could just try to dump out some cards and play Lily and hopefully draw something good. It's just is not a good situation to be in. And it almost feels like no matter what Pedro does, he's not in a good spot. But wow, he's wow. going straight for Pikachu and Zekrom, saying, hey... If you got it, you got it. Uh, but this is the only way I might be able to win this game. Yeah, I mean, that's that's one way to go about things, <laughs> I guess. He's just going to put the 90 damage on. Fabian, with a large hand size, I don't see any energies in there just yet, though. So he's not guaranteed to lose just yet. <laughs> which is really all Pedro can hope for in this spot. Yeah, it looks like Fabian is oh, eyeing up. An energy, wow. Yeah, he's got a Tapu Lele GX in his deck, and I think he has an Ultra Ball in his hand, so if he can Wonder Tag for Volkner. Yeah, as long as there's Volkner and Energy Switch in his hand. Oh, there's also for a Tapu Koko Prism Star as well. He's got plenty of ways to power up this Pikachu and Zekrom GX, and yeah, if he gets to three energy, full Blitz or Tag Bolt GX can easily knock out this Tapu Lele GX. Uh, he's got the choice band to add the 30 damage. There we see a switch into Jirachi. I got to think this game is all but over, Joe. <laughs> it does look like it. It feels so rare that he's not able to just close the game here. Looks like he's going to discard a Lightning Energy. I think it depends what his prize cards were. There were There's definitely a Volkner in his deck. Does yeah. he just not have access to Energy Switch in his deck? I see him searching through right now. There's an energy switch, so it should oh, be yeah. there for him. He's discarded the lightning energy, but you can always use the Tapu Koko Prism Star to get it back anyway. And now we're going to see him just go ahead and grab. Yep, and Pedro knows that is game over. So uh, Pedro, not a very good start in the first game. So as you said, these, <laughs> these are going to be some quick games with some hard-hitting decks. Hopefully we see a little bit more interaction in the, the second game there. But uh, Fabian does take the first game, and... Um, you know, we talk about uh, Stefan Ivanov, who won the North America International Championships, and um, his teammate, Fabian, has almost been forgotten a little bit. He's typically played the exact same decks as Stefan. He's had some good results, but uh, he just seems to be in the shadow a little bit. Seems to have some unfortunate luck when the, when the time is right, even being knocked out by Stefan at the North America International Championships in. Uh, it seems like the time is right for him to have a big run, and maybe it's this international championships. Yeah, he's been knocking on the door for a while, and as you said, he was actually the one to bring Zoroark Garbodor before Stefan even was. He was the originator, really, in many ways, pioneering that archetype while it was still uh, you know, not the most popular deck. And these guys both brought it to the tournament, and obviously both did well, yep. Stefan being more in the limelight just for taking the big win. But Fabian is no slouch himself at all, and having testing partners such as Pedro and Stefan, some of the best Europe has to offer. They're always going to bring their A-game to these sorts of events, and he didn't put a foot wrong that game. Okay, all right, so we got both players setting up here for game number two in round two. Hopefully we have a good one between two of the best players in Europe. We do see prize cards. There he is. Uh, three lightning energy and an electro power. Um, and for Pedro, we do see Absol. That could be a big one. And a Zapdos and Electro Power of his own. And we'll see how this second game goes here. As looks like, oh no, Tapu Fabian's Koko going to start GX. off with his tech Tapu Koko GX. That is not the card you want to start with. That's really good for Pedro, especially when he'll know Fabian's list and they only play two copies of Energy Switch. So when that's the case, when you start the Tapu Koko GX, you can't use that amazing Aero Trail abil ability just to get energies from you know, all your other attackers and just burst out of nowhere. Now Pedro can be much more relaxed in trying to maybe just go ahead and full blitz more energies onto his board here. So it feels like a really good, really much better opening for Pedro and awkward for Fabian. As yeah, and because it's already in play, 
you know you can be more aggressive if you can just knock out Tapu Koko GX. Then you yep. have no worries about using full blitz, getting all of your energy into play, and that's when things can kind of snowball. So for several reasons, starting with this Tapu Koko GX is probably a nightmare scenario. Yeah, it's such a big card in the matchup, but just not when you start the card, especially because it yeah. has 170 hit points as well. <laughs> it's similar to a Tapu Lele GX in this regard. Yeah. Uh, so it really is awkward. Pedro able to ultra ball here to continue to develop his hand. I think he's already got a Lily in there. So he's doing pretty well. He can m maybe start searching out a few cards that are always good to put onto your board. Zera Aura GX is really nice for some early retreating options. It's another way to get around Absol as well, of course, in the deck. Um, it could get him into his Jirachi early for some stellar wishing. Instead, he's just going to go ahead and grab more Jirachis. <laughs> Let's just get as many combo pieces rolling early as we can. Sure. One Jirachi's good, why not two? <laughs> <laughs> they do both play a large amount of Switch cards as well as these um, Guzmas and Skateboards, so there's plenty of ways Pedro can get into these Jirachis early, as we are going to see him Lily for six cards here. Holding on to Energy Switch and Volkner, putting himself in pretty good stead already here. All right, so six cards off of this Lily. He's definitely going to be looking for a Switch, or at least a Lightning Energy, plus a way to get Zero or a GX so he can start to use those Stellar Wish abilities. And it's pretty remarkable how many supporting cards Lightning-type Pokemon have now. Uh, we've had Zero Aura GX and Electro Power since that Lost Thunder expansion, but just now the correct Lightning Pokemon have come out to really uh, take advantage of these powerful options. For a while, you, you looked at those cards and you're like, ah, yeah, those seem like they have a lot of power to them, a lot of punch to them, but... The timing just wasn't right. The cards just weren't right. But now you have things like Pikachu and Zekrom GX. You have the Zapdos. Uh, you have even Jolteon GX that we see in some other decks. Lightning Pokemon are probably as powerful as they can be right now. And even that Thunder Mountain Prism Star Stadium card, there's just so much support. And it uh, feels like Tapu Koko Prism Star has also pushed this kind of deck over the edge and made it super powerful. I think that's the card that sort of pushed the threshold to, okay, we have to just take advantage of all the Lightning support. As you said, the Zero Aura, when that first came out in a vacuum, that card is so powerful. It's a combination of, um, you know, some powerful abilities. We've seen Dark Cloak rule the game for a yeah. number of years. We saw, you know, 160 damage was the same as Boswell GX's base output, and you even had uh, the reload attaching um, attaching energies from the discard pile that we saw on a Turtonator GX. These were all cards that have seen play at different parts of the game, and it's all wrapped into one neat package, but it just didn't have enough to go alongside it. And we finally have the amount of cards to make this really pay off, as we do see him take full advantage of the uh, Zero Aura GX's Thunderclap zone ability, retreating that Pikachu and Zekrom, and getting his first Stellar Wish off. Looks like he's grabbed himself an escape board here. Yeah, uh, Skateboard was probably not the card he was looking for. He's already retreated this turn, so that's uh, a bit of a, a whiff on the Stellar Wish. And yeah, just has to pass the turn. You would think after, you know, a big Lily getting two Jirachi out, you would see some explosive things, but really not a big turn for Pedro. He move over to Fabian now. He has himself the Viridian Forest Stadium. It's not only Malamar decks that can take advantage <laughs> of this. You love seeing Lightning Energies in the discard pile to combine with your Tapu Koko Prism Star. So Lightning for Lightning is always a really nice play that you can go for in this deck, and it's going to be Fabian's first search as well to see what he has access to, because he is holding on to a couple ball search cards as well, I believe. So he's got himself a pretty reasonable turn as well here. Yeah, not a bad start. Gets a, a Nest Ball, finds a Jirachi of his own. <laughs> common thing we'll see a lot this weekend I'm sure. Uh, lots of stellar wishing will be happening and it's easy to see why you just get to filter through your deck so quickly get to find the right trainer cards and it just really makes sure you the, the amount of time you have a bad hand where you just can't do anything it just reduced dramatically because you have Jirachi in your deck. It's one of those things where you just chock your deck full of so many outs. Even if you're not drawing into physical supporters, you're drawing into more switches or more escape boards, more things that let you reuse Jirachi again and give yourself a second bite of the cherry. That's pretty much what you're trying to go for here with the Stellar Wish. It looks like he's switched into his Jirachi. He's yet to play a supporter, so he's got the Volkner option to grab him a skateboard to just go for a Zapdos knockout this turn. There's not a whole lot of pressure outside of just taking the one prize, but it feels like it's maybe his best line this turn. 
Yeah, he could play Volkner. It just feels like such a weak first turn. I mean, of all the things you can do, uh, Volkner for just like a lightning energy and an escape board just does not feel like the thing you want to be doing on your first turn. And uh, yeah, he's he's actually ultra balling for Tapu Lele GX so he can Lily for seven cards. And that feels much more like what you want to do on your first turn. He wants more. He really <laughs> does want more. That's also a second lightning energy into the discard pile. So now he's always threatening a Tapu Koko Prism Star, just bursting onto the field and getting a load of energies into play. So this does open the door for maybe whiffing a switching card and not getting a Zapdos knockout. But it's more important for the longevity of the game that he's able to develop his hand a little bit more here. He's once again staring down Ooh. Absol. No switch card from him here. No energy either. Yeah, so not even any sort of Zero Aura attach. And no, there's no way that he can do anything. He's just going to pass. And he had already used Viridian Forest. So yeah. missing an energy attachment can be pretty big there especially because you have those energy switch in your deck where even though, I mean, you put an energy on your Zapdos, that doesn't help you power up your Pikachu and Zekrom, but in the future, you can just energy switch that away, and uh, it actually does matter quite a bit. He chose to hold on to the one Volkner instead of just getting an attachment. He could have drawn an extra card and had a guaranteed attachment, which is always something you do want to try and strive for. So it's a small stumble there for Fabian just because the Lily wasn't kind to him in getting any sorts of attachments. We move it back over to Pedro now. He's going to go ahead and grab his own Tapu Koko Prism Star. He's also got the Viridian Forest available for him to get some extra lightnings into the discard pile. That's exactly what he's going to point at right now and throw a lightning in there to again just get one straight back out for him. And uh, that means that he's likely to be getting a Pikachu and Zekrom rolling this turn if he oh, yeah. does choose to. Yeah, the perfect turn for him would be if he could Guzma out the Tapu Koko GX, find either Choice Band or Electro Power, get that two prize knockout, and eliminate the threat of Tapu Thunder GX. Uh, then you have no worries. You just pile all your energy onto Pikachu and Zekrom GX and say, yep, this is going to happen. You cannot stop me. And they know each other's list as well, so knocking out the Tapu Koko GX, they know that there's no rescue stretcher available. And that's the sort of advantage that you get when you are, uh, when you know Teammates. what other people have. Uh, sometimes you have to play around these cards because someone could just be playing a rescue stretcher and it puts you in more danger if you take it off the board straight away because they could use that aero trail and get things going. But in this case, Pedro can be very comfortable in just taking a knockout if he's able to. His first Jirachi is going to grab him a switch. He had the option for Thunder Mountain, so he's already going to have enough energy cards regardless this turn, thanks to the Coco Prism Star and the... Um, and his manual attachment. At the same time, you never really want to put the Thunder Mountain down in mirror matches because <laughs> it's just such a such a worry that you can get responded on too easily. Right. So we do see... Uh, I'm not sure if he's playing Volkner. Or, yeah, he actually is playing Volkner here. He did have Guzma in his hand. He did have an option to go after the Tapu Koko GX on the bench, but looks like he is opting for Ultra Ball this turn instead. Maybe trying to be a little more conservative and just settle for something like Zapdos this turn and knock out his opponent's Jirachi. I mean, where does Fabian move into if if his Jirachi's knocked out? He's got no energies on his board. He's having to find himself a way of switching back out if he wants to even use Zapdos pressure. He would need um, even things like Electro Power on top of this because Zapdos doesn't hit itself for weakness with its own Thunderous Assault attack. Um, so Pedro instead, he's just going to try and well, he's also looking up a Ooh. Pikachu and Zekrom. Maybe he is going to go all in and <laughs> get full bits onto the other Pikachu and Zekrom. He's got options here. Wow, he's going aggressive. I don't mind this at all as well, because the Ultra Ball gets extra energy in the discard pile for him. The Coco can get the full value on uh, whatever he wants here. He's already picked up a switch for his Jirachi, so uh, he can get around this Absol pretty neatly and get you know, a big one prize knockout. But at the same time, putting you know sometimes six Ooh. or more energies onto the board is just going to be a lot to deal with when Fabian has none. All right, so here we go. We're going to see the Dance of the Ancients from Tapu Koko Prism Star getting a lightning energy on both of those Pikachu and Zekrom GX. Tapu Koko will go to the Lost Zone, and there we're going to see full blitz from Pikachu and Zekrom GX. And I'm going to assume that those three lightning energy are going to go on to the benched Pikachu and Zekrom. And it does seem a little risky in the face of Tapu Koko, but your opponent has two Pokemon GX on the board already. If you can ever use that Tag Bolt GX with the six energy, get the team bonus, 
you're going to be taking a four prize turn, wiping out multiple GXs in one attack. It's too tempting to say no in this situation <laughs> when there's the Tapu Koko. Well, there's a lot less fear of a Tapu Koko coming down. You just have to have to go ahead and pl play for this out. He has one energy switch and one Guzma in his hand, so we may even be seeing it all go to the active here. But instead, he is going to go for the three on the back. Um, this means that he doesn't quite have the full combo for next turn to take all the GX knockouts in one turn. If he was to put on the active, he could have guaranteed it. But this just means that he's a little bit safer if Fabian is to try and get a, just the amount of burst that is in both players' decks. It yeah. does safeguard you from that at the very least. Yeah, I like this a lot because uh, if your active gets knocked out, then you still have the four energy on the bench and you can actually still pull off Tag Bolt GX with Thunder Mountain Prism Star and the fifth energy. That'll get you to the bonus. Uh, if they don't knock out either of your Pikachu and Zekrom, you're probably going to win. Yeah. <laughs> um, and yeah, you can always energy switch from the bench to the active or active to the bench with Zero Aura GX retreating is trivial. So this seems like a dominant position for Pedro. And this is kind of the spot you end up in against these tag team decks. The energy is out there. Your opponent has to respond. I mean, if Fabian does nothing this turn, he's just going to get blown out. I mean, there's just two giant 40 HP Pokemon GX, and uh, they can wipe out multiple Pokemon in a single attack. It's just you, you, you got to do something, otherwise you're just going to get run over very quickly. All Fabian's been able to do is commit a Volkner to grab yeah. himself one Lightning and one Escape Board. He attaches to a Zapdos, just retreats into it, and I think Thunderous Assault is all he can answer here. And it does not feel like enough <laughs> when you see the amount of stuff on Pedro's side of the field. Definitely not. 80 damage, pretty good for one energy, but that's a three-hit knockout on a Pikachu and Zekrom GX. Now, if Pedro can go with a Guzma, then energy switch, energy, he can get a four-prize turn here with Tag Bolt GX. That's it all. It's all there for him. He's going to throw away an Electro Power with a Viridian Forest, grab himself another Lightning Energy out of his deck. Looks like he's just going to be really running Riot over this board this turn here. Yeah. It's usually not good news when your opponent throws away an Electro Power, one of the, <laughs> one of the strongest cards in their deck. <laughs> you know bad things are about to come your way. It'd be telling you exactly what's what's going to be coming. <laughs> he's he's holding on to a lot of combination pieces. That is one thing about this deck. You need to keep an eye on these when you're using these Jirachis. Sometimes you're not taking immediate cards for you. You're taking cards for one or two turns down the line so that you can have these big bursting turns. Oh, see, boy. One energy switch. Here we go, Joe. That's six. <laughs> that is six energy, and we see Guzma in Pedro's hand. If he wants to go... Oh, he's counting them up. There we do see Guzma going after Tapu Koko GX. And we're going to see our first Tag Bolt GX of the day. That is six lightning energy on that Pokemon, folks. And that means GX marker is flipped. 200 to the active, 170 damage to the bench Tapu Lele GX. That is a four prize knockout. And all of a sudden, Pedro just has to take one more prize card to win. It's textbook Pikachu and Zekrom GX play, dealing with two GXs all at once. He has a two <laughs> energy <laughing>. tag team <laughs> GX in the back as well. So if Fabian is able to deal with this six energy active, he's still in just awful shape, especially because you take four prizes all at once, your hand size gets huge as well. So yeah. it's not even enough to take a response knockout. You also need to try and disrupt their hand at the same time just to deny them game. But the swing is just so huge here that Fabian nice. now seems to be very, very behind. I mean, even if he somehow does 240 damage this turn, Pedro still has two lightning energy on the bench, yeah. Pikachu and Zekrom. Uh, yeah, it, it just does not look good. It was like, that's going to be all she wrote for this game. So after Pedro not being able to draw very well in the first game, Fabian simply leading a Tapu Koko GX meant that Pedro was able to go crazy with his energy, with no fear. No fear of putting eight down onto your board, <laughs> because you know that you're knocking out the Tafu Coco GX at the same turn, and then you can just go for this. Maybe in the third game we'll see some more intricate full blitzing, where they're only grabbing one energy card or no energy card sometimes, just for fear of response knockouts, but <laughs> in this situation, Pedro can just show the full power of Pikachu and Zekron GX. Okay, so he's going to escape rope. <laughs>
Maybe try to get one prize before he goes down. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Just go into that zap dose. I mean, there's really, really not much else I can see going on for Fabian here. <laughs> Puts the lightning energy onto his Jirachi. <laughs> And looks like he's just going to try to stall for a turn, bring out this Zera Aura GX. Uh, <laughs> energy switch onto his Absol and immediately pick up his prize cards yeah, and concede. <laughs> sure, sure. That's a lot of hand motions, <laughs> waving around, and then just picks up all of his cards. Showmanship <laughs> there from Fabian. Why not just showing Pedro that there was no other option that he could possibly do? Just showing, yeah, I had nothing. I couldn't deal with, you know, one of the Pikachu Zekrons, let alone both. Uh, th they are good friends, as we say, so some of this uh, joking around is only natural. They're both very calm and casual, both 1-0 so far in the tournament, and having to come up against each other again so early is a little awkward for them, but they'll relish the chance of one-upping the other here. And now we are tied one game apiece. Hopefully we'll get a good third game. Uh, those were The first two games were both kind of one-sided. Pedro's Tapu Lele got knocked out in the first game, and then uh, he just set up Pikachu and Zekrom and the snowball kept rolling and he was able to come back in game number two and now we'll see if there's any counterplay in the third game here. Both players playing the exact same 60 card deck list. They know exactly what's going on. They probably played this matchup a few times and uh, we'll see what happens here. There's so much that can happen. So much uh, so many different lines of play you can take with this Pikachu and Zekrom deck just because it is so explosive with all the options you have with the Tapu Koko Prism Star, the Thunder Mountain Prism Star, Energy Switch, you know, all the Electro Powers. Every game plays out differently because sometimes you're just like, yeah, turn one, Tapu Koko Prism Star, Energy Switch, Thunder Mountain, full blitz. <laughs> uh, and sometimes you do that and you're like, oh, also I have Choice Band and three Electro Powers take a three prize knockout on the first turn. <laughs> yeah, you can only realistically play around so much, yeah. but there's so much that the opponent can do if they are accumulating with Jirachi. So you have to think about likely outcomes, what, yeah. what people can do and how you can sort of hedge for the worst situation all at once. So it is, despite it sometimes looking like you're just throwing energies around, it, it can be more intricate than that in a lot of situations. And uh, <laughs> that in started a Tapu Lele GX where Pedro still can't find his own active Pokemon just yet, but at least he's getting a couple extra draws in here, Fabian, and he's going first, so yeah. he's hoping so, to get a big, big turn one. Pedro kind of cringe a little bit, saying, oh no, I have Mulligan twice now. Giving your opponent two extra cards with this deck is a horrible feeling, because that just gives them more chances to draw into their combo cards, and uh, that is not a place you want to be in, especially when you're going second. Yeah, that's for sure. And Fabian definitely happy to take those freebies from Pedro. He looks like he's got himself the tag team itself, Pikachu and Zekrom. There's the Mulligans, and wow, we already know that Fabian's turn is going to be stellar here. <laughs> he already has two Nest Balls, Ultra Ball, that can toss some energies away, a big Lily as well here. It's going to be a really good turn one from him. All right, so here we go. Game number three here in the second round of the Oceania International Championships in Melbourne, Australia. Well, Fabian does start off with Tapu Lele GX, so not the best starting Pokemon, but his hand is pretty good. <laughs> I think he's he's going to work around it, all things considered. He's got so much ball search. He's just drawn into the Tapu Koko Prism Star as well, so he's got Lightning Energy and Ultra Ball in his hand. If he wants to start pitching energies early, why not really in this situation when you can just keep digging, work towards your Lily later this turn? He's going to nest ball out that Jirachi as always. Always something you want to keep an eye out for. He does have, it looks like a Zero Aura as well. He could even fill his board entirely <laughs> on turn one here. Starts off with the escape rope so he can put Jirachi as his active Pokemon and use that Stellar Wish ability. And yeah, playing out as many cards as he can. He does have Lily in hand, it does appear. So he can put down the Lightning Energy Lily for six cards. And I do like doing it in this order, Lily first, so that you don't fill your hand with an extra card you might not be able to play uh, with Stellar Wish. And then after you've drawn your six cards, then you can look at your hand, try to figure out what options you need, and dig for it with Stellar Wish. Yeah, and it looked like, again, he just didn't draw into energy cards, so it's a good thing that he chose to attach first this time <laughs> around. He's learned from his Game 2 first turn decision. 
And although he could have used, maybe he could even he could even have used Stellar Wish just to take a card to burn with Ultra Ball, True, yeah. as well as the Lightning Energy. But he said, "I whiffed an Energy game two. I don't want to do that again, <laughs> uh, especially when his turn's already so strong. Why risk just missing a beat here when you're already so far ahead?" And he's got a big nine card hand size now oh. to work with. Yeah, but for as good as it looked, this really wasn't a huge turn. I mean, uh, he's got a bunch of cards, but he. Didn't really do a whole lot. All he ended up doing was play one lightning energy <laughs> and after all that. Yeah, most decks are content with one turn attachment, but not <laughs> this one. Not this one at all. He's just chock full of switching cards and Guzmas, it looks like. I mean, did he even get an energy in the discard pile? I don't no, think he did. He just chose to attach Mangali instead. So the Tapu Koko Prism Star is threatening, but not as threatening as it could be right now. Uh, there's no hint of anything like Viridian Forest either to help you pitch energy or even get energy to attach, which he's going to struggle to come by next turn as well without ultra balling away a load of these switching pieces and just lilying his hand back up. So the big lilies <laughs> have been <laughs> awkward here yeah. both times. And this is an interesting situation for Pedro. When you have your opponent putting down that Pikachu and Zekrom GX with the one energy on it uh, and it hasn't attacked yet, it gives you an opportunity to do things like get out Zapdos, Guzma it out, and hit it for 80 damage. So you can soften it up for maybe a full Blitz later, plus a Choice Band to get a three-prize knockout without having to use things like your GX attack or anything big. And uh, it, it does leave you a little vulnerable. Even having the Tapu Koko Prism Star on your bench, not having used the ability, that can be a big swing in the game if your opponent is able to knock it out before you get a chance to use the ability. Because that's really your main source of energy acceleration, your big burst, where you can get that full blitz attack off faster. Because once you do the first one, all the energy comes with it, and then you're set up from there. And if you can stop the first full blitz from happening, or even set it back by a turn, that can be the difference in the game. Yeah, that's definitely the case. But Pedro, again, just saying, Pikachu and Zekrom's the way I want to try and approach this game. He had the option. He's holding on to not only Guzma, but also a skateboard. So he could have gone for just a Zapdos knockout whilst also Stellar wishing an extra card. But instead, he's just going to try and outrace Fabian at getting to full blitz. Sure. Can't blame him. Uh, Pikachu and Zekrom is pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Especially when there's a nice 170 hit point Tapu Lele on the board once again. Oh, yeah. That's one thing that he has the small advantage at, over Fabian at the moment right now. And he's able to Stellar wish into a Lily as well. So he again can get more hand advantage rocking on his end here. Yeah, maybe his Lily will be a little bit better than his opponent's. Um, probably looking for energy, ways to discard them. Uh, an attack seems very unlikely this turn, but hey, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> the amount of burst that can come out, it's never out of your reach. He's looking at a skateboarding. He wants to play it just to draw more cards from the Lily, the lily that's for sure. Yeah. So he's just going to slap it onto the Jirachi Lily for five cards, it looks like. All right, yeah. let's see what he gets. Probably looking for some energy and Ultra Ball. Thunder Mountain, no energy cards. Ooh. Both of them. The Lily's really not treating them well right now. <laughs> so he does have Viridian Forest, but I think he noticed Fabian didn't do a whole lot after uh -huh. his Lily to eight. So... There's a big question of whether or not it's even worth playing. Uh, you certainly don't want to play Thunder Mountain Prism Star. That seems like <laughs> that can only lead to bad things. But uh, Viridian Forest, that's an interesting one. Could play it down and search for an energy, but do you want to give your opponent access to the same thing? Yeah, it feels like it doesn't give Pedro immediate help, even if he's just getting an energy just to Ultra Ball to put in a discard pile. He could do that all next turn. Yeah. So why, why give Fabian the help? And instead, he is just going to pass it over. His Jirachi does wake up. And it is back to Fabian now to see if he can start getting full Blitz going. Okay, so he does draw energy for the turn. So he's able to Ultra Ball one of them away. Also, Ultra Ball is away energy switch, which is surprising to me. That's one of the important cards for pulling off a big combo attack. But I suppose at this point, if he can find an escape board or a switch or something, uh, all he needs is... Top of Coco Prism Star's ability and an attachment from the hand, and he can pull off a full blitz this turn. Going to continue to go deeper into his deck with an Ultra Ball as well. 
trying to thin towards that Lily. I agree that it's pretty interesting that he pitched one of the energy switches there. Oh, and he ultra balled away his Tapu Koko GX as well. So Again, it seems saying... like a powerful card in this matchup, but <laughs> just saying, you know what, if I can just charge up two Pikachu and Zekrom, I'll probably win this game. That's powerful too. That's powerful <laughs> too. I think when you are the pace setter, you're the one trying to go in the ascendancy. Most often than not, the Pikachu and Zekrom's getting the job done anyway, and they just have higher hit points, so it forces Pedro to have more choice bands and electro powers to respond regardless. That It just seems to make sense a lot of the time. But he did not find an energy off that Lily. There they all were, hiding in the Jirachi, so he has missed a beat again here. I don't think he can attack this turn. No, it doesn't uh, look likely. He still could have found Thunder Mountain, Prism Star, or Viridian Forest. Either of those would have helped him out, but... No, I don't see any of that. Big miss. A big, big miss from him because we know Pedro's hand is very strong as well now. And he Oof. will be able to Viridian Forest and guarantee some energies into his hand. So it feels like Pedro's dodged a bullet here. The deck loves like the deck loves just getting that turn to attack, but turn to one energy. That's not great. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he hasn't done anything wrong. He's played Lily for a bunch of cards both turns. He's used Jirachi's ability to look through the deck and just somehow drew a terrible combination of cards and just was not able to pull off an attack. And if you're Pedro, you got to be like, whoa, this is a gift. Uh, I have to take advantage of this immediately. He's just drawn his own lightning energy as well. So that's even better for him. He's not going to struggle. He can get Viridian Forest energy in, energy out as well and get himself towards the, ta the Tapu Koko Prism Star play if he really needs to. It sees, I don't think he's holding on to energy switch right now. That's one of the only pieces that he's kind of requiring in order to get his own Pikachu and Zekrom attacking at the very least. So you see Stellar Wish being used from Pedro. Uh, sees a bunch of energy, looks like an Ultra Ball, and perhaps a Volkner is the last card. Um, Volkner is an interesting card. It's been around since Sun and Moon Ultra Prism, so nearly a year now. And really did not see a whole lot of play. It popped up every once in a while in some stage two decks as a way to search out rare candy, such as the Rayquaza deck with Vikavolt. But uh, it's another one of those cards that has popped up again because it's like, oh, well, getting a lightning energy and an item card is pretty strong. Uh, if all you need is like the electro power to get the last 30 damage for a knockout, the switch to get your Pokemon active or the energy switch. There's just so many powerful item cards to search for. And getting an energy with it is pretty strong. The lightning one specifically, the, the stock of a lightning energy has gone way up. <laughs> yeah. Just because you love having them in the hand just to even discard for Tapu Koko Prism Star. So it's pretty much the best basic energy you can have in the game right now. Right. And Faulkner can grab it for you. So Pedro looked at his opponent's discard pile. He's like, I'm pretty sure your Tapu Koko GX is in there. All right. I think I can just go for it. I'm just going to full blitz. And unless you have a hand with, like, four Electro Powers in it, I'm going to get the six energy on my Pikachu and Zekrom GX. I'm going to set up this Tag Bolt GX, and I don't think you can stop me. Yeah, and it's not a bad assumption to make, really. He's Voltnering here. That could guarantee him Energy Switch, so he doesn't have to put down the Thunder Mountain if he wants to. Or he could be going for another Bull Search card just to, so that he could power up another Pikachu Zekrom as well. Both very viable options here. Yeah. I mean, his hand is loaded with stuff. He's got Tapu Koko Prism Star already. I think he's got an Ultra Ball. He's just trying to figure out the best way to sequence this, the best way to give himself the best odds of winning this game. Like Nest Balls is going to be his pick here. The Lightning Energy and the Nest Ball, so you can probably search out a second Pikachu and Zekrom GX. And here we go, Pedro. <laughs> Not sure about it, but yeah, <laughs> there's the Volkner. I mean, this might seem like he's taking a long time, but this is a very important turn. When these when these cards are so powerful and snowball so quickly, uh, the game gets compressed into fewer turns, so each decision you make gets amplified. If you make a mistake in a game that only lasts four or five turns, that can end up being the difference between winning and losing. Whereas if you're playing a game that's taking like eight, nine, or ten turns, making a small mistake, sequencing things in the wrong order, might not matter in the long term, but when every single thing matters, you need to make sure you get it right. For sure. And we are seeing Pedro again. He's really 
debating what's the best route here. It looks like he's just going to pull the trigger and say, here are my tag team GXs now. <laughs> he's got an old to boot. That here's six him. prizes worth of Pokemon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> here's, uh, yeah, if you can do two big attacks yourself, good for you. But I'm hoping that my guys are going to be getting the job done. He's also got the Ultra Ball. You saw he was debating with Zapdos as well as Absol. Both of these are reasonable options uh, to try and slow down Fabian once again. Um, you're going to see him discard a Lightning and that free extra Volkner that he had as well. All right, so I believe there's now two Lightning Energy in the discard pile for that Tapu Coco Prism Star. And he's going to grab a Zapdos as well with that Ultra Ball. We're going to see a big attack this turn. We're going to see the full blitz and a bunch of energy hit the field. And it'll be up to Fabian to respond. And usually the easiest response is just Tapu Koko GX. But yeah. he's already actively chosen to get rid of that. So again, it's just this situation, the same as game two, where Pedro feels unthreatened and he can get the full value with this Pikachu and Zekrom GX. <laughs> he's still debating every decision. Yeah, I think he's just Possible. trying to figure out, should I just use Zapdos and just take the one prize knockout, or uh -huh. should I just go all in? Well, there's the Tapu Koko Prism Star. <laughs> that answers our question, I think. What's interesting is that his Volkner went ahead and grabbed himself a Ball Search card rather than Energy Switch, and now it means that he has to put the Thunder Mountain down if he wants to take the prizes. Ooh, so boy. It's, wow, it's really interesting that he didn't go for Ooh. the Energy Switch from his Volkner. All right, so... Thunder Mountain Prism Star, uh, that Prism Star Stadium card that reduces the cost of all your lightning Pokemon's attacks by one lightning energy. So that means we get to see full blitz for two energy instead of three. And he actually had one lightning in his discard pile, so he couldn't even use Dance of the Ancients for the full value. But he is going to get the turn to attack, something that Fabian missed, and he's going to get three energy in play. And because Tapu Koko GX is in his opponent's discard pile, he knows he doesn't have to worry about that Tapu Thunder GX. And he can make this play, get a bunch of energy in play, but it's not as strong as it could have been. Yeah, it felt like it could have been a lot more threatening. Zapdos doesn't feel like it's a big part of his strategy unless it's literally closing on... Maybe it's denying Fabian putting down another Jirachi now or something like that later down the line. That's got to be like the only thing I can see. Yeah. It's better than just getting an energy switch down because you're essentially giving Fabian a response of an attacker. It's just how powerful that response is going to be, really. And if it's going to be able to reach into one hit hero territory. Oof, so now there's a lot of decisions to be made for <laughs> Fabian. Um, this is the situation where you would consider using Tag Bolt GX without the bonus. Mm -hmm. You know, if you can get a Choice Band and an Electro Power, you can get a three prize knockout with that Tag Bolt GX. But the problem is then your opponent could do the same to you on the next turn. Uh, so it's just figuring out what can you do in this situation to give yourself the best chance to win this race. Uh, it's going to be rough because there's no choice bands currently in his hand or electro powers. So it doesn't feel like it's lining up for him and committing to the tag bolt would be all of his energies in one basket. And when Pedro's already got three in the back, it's, it's too risky. It's, I mean, it might be his only option, but <laughs> it's very, very risky to not full blitz, uh, blitz yourself here, especially because you're having to pop your own Tapu Koko Prism Star as well here. He's got the guaranteed attack at this point. We are seeing him put multiple Jirachis down, so I think he's just going to try and hope to pull a bunch of these all at once to reach for a big knockout. We see a Lily here for three cards before using any of the switches. There's one Electro Power. Okay, it's still not enough. He does have a switch, but he doesn't have a skateboard currently, right. so going into Jirachi doesn't really do anything. It just, yeah, it would just make him get another switch card rather than yeah. pull towards Choice Bands or... Electro powers. He would need three of those combinations to go for uh, the full blitz. So instead, he's going to have to accept the tag ball Oof. GX tag. Probably even that doesn't reach. Even that's ten short. Yeah, he's probably just going to have to full, full blitz, blitz. Yeah. and this puts him in a pretty bad position because Pedro does have Tapu Koko GX. Uh, if he drops it down here and just goes with Tapu Thunder, he gets a three prize knockout. And then all he has to do is knock out the Tapu Lele GX or the Zero Aura GX to win the game? I mean... Oh, and Tapu Koko GX is already in his hand as well. Pedro's already got it there for him. I think this isn't going to be too difficult. He can 
just take the two energy off this one, Pikachu and Zekrom, if he wants to. He's got extra manual attachments on top. The Thunder Mountain Prism Star is still in play, so it's oh going to be really efficient and easy for him to take a knockout if he wants to. <laughs> I mean, maybe we are, we are dreaming big enough. <laughs> Pedro could actually win the game he on could. this turn. <laughs> uh, if he has energy switch, a fifth energy, and then some way to add 60 damage to his attacks... You know, between Choice Band and Electro Power. That's one Electro Power at the moment. Oh, we could see the big Tag Bolt GX take the three prize knockout on the active, the two prize knockout on the Tapu Lele GX, and that could be it. That would be a turn three win. That's the biggest dream possible. <laughs> I mean, he's still <laughs> he's still in such a great spot if he doesn't win this turn, but just the fact that that's available to him just shows you the power of Pikachu and Zekrom GX. It looks like the Jirachi didn't do too much for him. Grabbed him a Guzma. So he may have to settle for only three prize cards this time. <laughs> Darn. <laughs> yeah, the nice thing, though, is uh, with Thunder Mountain Prism Star, you only have to commit two energy to Tapu Koko GX if you decide to go that route. Yeah. Uh, he also has Guzma in hand, so he can go after the benched Pikachu and Zekrom GX. It has four energy on it instead of two. So here we can see something big. Oh, well, he actually is going to get rid of the Thunder Mountain and go for Viridian Forest instead. I think when you've already got six energies <laughs> in play and you can guarantee a seventh attachment, just trying to get Fabian far away from, uh, you know, he, uh, Pedro could be using a Guzma this turn on yeah. the four energy, Pikachu and Zekrom GX, you have to imagine he will. So taking the Thunder Mountain away from Fabian, pushing him further out from any other big response has got to be what he's going for here. We see a fourth energy commitment from Pedro onto the Pikachu and Zekrom. He can always back out and go towards the Tapu Koko if he wants to. <laughs> All right, so he's going to Guzma. It's like just Tapu oh. Lele GX here. See what he decides to go for. He does have one Electro Power in hand, so he can add 30 damage to this full Blitz and get three Lightning Energy in play. I don't mind this play either, but I got to tell you, Joe, this sets Fabian up for a six prize turn. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's so strange that he's gone for this line. He could just lose now. Then, oh I boy. mean, it's not it's not actually out of the realms of possibility at oh, all. Not at all. There's one electro power already in his hand. Yeah, he just needs uh, two more electro powers or electro power in a choice band, plus uh, an energy switch and an energy Energy's or in hand now. A thunder mountain prism star. I, you got to go for it, right? <laughs> got to. You absolutely have got to. Oh His man! Supporter is Faulkner and Guzma. Ah, those are not good cards. He needed. He needed something like Cynthia, especially when there's no a skateboard on his own Jirachis. He he was so close. He's he was one card to, off, right? Yeah, he's one card away. Ugh. But just no option. Sometimes you see players use um, Marshadow in these sorts of spots. You could <laughs> Volkner for Let Loose, and maybe that could get you your last couple of pieces. Neither of these players are using their Marshadow. He's just going to have to retreat here into Jirachi. He's going to go for Stellar Wish. Oh, he's going to uh, use the uh, Viridian Forest first. Get himself another Lightning Energy. Improve your odds. Yeah, he could still draw into, like, Cynthia here. Mm-hmm and give himself the opportunity to pull this off. It's pretty surprising that he chose to promote his Pikachu and Zekrom in the first place this turn, to be honest, because now he's forced himself to find even more cards. True, yeah. I think that way, if you top deck like one of your pieces, you yeah. can simply retreat and yeah. pull off the, the thing for the game. He does find Lily, which could draw some extra cards, but it's not going to be very many. You really need to scary. draw almost perfectly off the Lily, because now you need some way to switch. Gets Choice Band. Is this enough for game? He can still... Oh, no, because he's paid Retreat. Can he Volkner for a physical switch? Uh, but he I still needs Energy Switch as well. Right. Yeah, he's one off still. One off. Yeah, so Pedro getting rid of uh, his own Thunder Mountain Prism Star actually is the difference in this game. If he had not done that, we would see the Tag Bolt GX for six prize cards. <laughs> Just That's, absurd. That is absurd. That really is just ridiculous that one attack is just game. And uh, we're going to see Fabian now look through Pedro's discard pile. We know Pedro is holding on to the perfect two cards in Tapu Koko, GX, and Guzma. And uh, as long as he survives this turn, it's game for him. 
Yeah, if you're Fabian here, I think you just have to pretty much pass the turn and force your opponent to have Guzma. Uh, I don't think sending out your Pikachu and Zekrom GX here is a reasonable play because three prize cards is game over. Has to be bring up the opponent's Zapdos and just use one more Stellar Wish and pass. I think that's got to be his play. Sure seems like it. If you're not going to win the game, you should not be attacking with Pikachu and Zekrom here. Got to force Pedro, even with a four-card hand size. You've got to force him to have it. Here's one more Stellar Wish. He's just going to grab another Guzma because he will need that next turn if he gets another turn. And time has been called at this point, so we are in the extra three turns. We're in overtime here, but i got to tell you, this game is going to finish. Yes, it will. Pedro has the answers in his hand. Fabian doing what he could to be alive on board <laughs> but Pedro has the answers in his hand already. All right. There's so many ways to win the game here. Uh, even just... What's the most stylish, though? That's the question. <laughs> what does the most damage? <laughs> he could take... All right. There yeah, is the Guzma. Sure. He's going to tag Bolt GX, knock out Zero Aura GX, and one of those Jirachi. And Pedro Eugenio Torres is going to advance to two wins and zero losses here at the Oceania International Championships, putting the full power of Pikachu and Zekrom GX on display. It was a really cultured performance from him as well. As well, He knew when to go all in. He knew when to not. Potentially a risk on that final turn there, but Fabian not able to dig hard enough for the extra damage increases to take the six prize knockout. He was one card off. He was one card away. <laughs> he could. Pedro could have played safer, but he did just enough <laughs> in order to close the game there. But that was really intense games in really different situations as well. The games never go long with Pikachu and Zekrom, so it may <laughs> feel like it can just be over too quickly, but that's the intention of the deck. Yeah, I mean, there were not a lot of turns in those games, but the games did go somewhat long. There's a lot of decisions to make. There's a lot of searching through your deck with Jirachi's Stellar Wish. Uh, there's so many things you have to sequence in the correct order. And, I mean, we actually did go to time, even though a couple of those games were pretty short. Yeah. But, yeah, both players had an opportunity to win that third and final game. Uh, Pedro had a chance to win with a five-prize knockout. Uh, Fabian had a chance to win with a six-prize knockout. And both players were just one card off of pulling off that major combo. But Pedro, at the end of the day,